Hi, this is not Anna Gibbs. This <laughs> is Rita Gildersleeve. And I have taken the Monday Morning Mojo podcast hostage and I am cornering Anna and I'm going to ask her all the burning questions that we've had um, for her. So uh, welcome and happy Monday. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Hi, Rita. Oh, wow. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited for it, for this podcast takeover. So um for anybody listening that might not be familiar um, with who I am, I've worked with Anna for a number of years, going on a decade now, which oh seems gosh, really and cra uh, crazy to me. And I do some of the behind the scenes work for the Monday Morning Mojo podcast. Yep. And I said, hey, I want an opportunity to interview you and really learn, uh, help our listeners learn more about your own personal development journey. And so she agreed. And so I've loosened the handcuffs a little bit, and <laughs> now we're going to dive deep into Monday Morning Mojo. So thanks, Anna. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, I'm excited to be a guest on my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, really, it'll, it's going to be a great conversation. Thanks for doing it. Yes. And so when I, whenever I talk to people um, about you, one of the questions that comes up very often is, Anna seems very tuned into personal development, right? Like she's always providing me with motivation and me with inspiration through all of her platforms. How did that start? So that's where I want to start today is really how did your personal development journey start? It's mm, a great question. Um, well, it started probably, I guess, at least 20 years, well, no, 25 years ago. Um, it was, it was really after I left a very abusive uh, first marriage. And um, during that time, and, you know, through the trauma I experienced, I, I was really programmed to believe in um, my limitations. And I was programmed to believe some things that were not true about myself, right? I created these stories from what my experience was. And um, when I made the decision to leave that relationship, I, I knew that things had to change and I knew that it had to start with me. And, you know, while everyone's journey is different um, and while I certainly didn't, um, you know, deserve that treatment, I had to take some responsibility, though, for allowing myself to be stuck. And so I started to read more books. I mean, we're talking 25 years ago. So there were different resources available. I'm going to be, you know, cite my age now. Um, but I started reading more books and I started listening to, you know, different um, messages, I'll say, right? I got uh, more connected with my own spirituality, my faith, um, and really started to understand that your world is really shaped by the way you think. And I'll tell you, you know, even just like watching the Oprah Winfrey show, I mean, that was a big thing in that time period, right? Uh, in the late 90s and into the 2000 uh, period. And, you know, there were really like dynamic speakers on shows like that, that were helping me to understand what it meant to develop yourself and, and really what it meant to, look at your mindset, look at your behavior and understand that the way you think is the way you act. And that brings all the results in your life. So I just started shifting and that journey began then and has continued to today. Um, and as I've said here on, on this, you know, podcast and um, in front of anyone that is willing to listen to me that, you know, the greatest project you could ever work on in your life is yourself. And so um, I do carve out time every day to grow personally in some way. Um, you know, it's changed and evolved over the years uh, to different topics. And, um, you know, I spend time listening to podcasts, reading books, going to workshops, uh, being coached. And um, it was just to back up a little bit during that time period that I also really started to understand the power of coaching. And um, I was, I've always been in sales and business development. So I also had the uh, benefit of working with leaders and working with uh, coaches and people who would help you get more strategic or look at your behaviors and understand how to achieve success and how to set goals. And, um, you know, so then that grew into a love of wanting to help other people do the same. 
right? Because one of my values is coming from contribution. So what I learn, I like to teach. And so that also really developed my um, love and passion for coaching and teaching and supporting, you know, individuals in the goals that they have. And so when you, so what I'm hearing you say is the first step was to start to lead yourself, right? When you yeah. removed yourself out of, out of that relationship, the first step was really to lead yourself into a, a more positive mindset and into a different place before you can then start leading other people, right? So you have to drink oh, yeah. the water that you're selling, right? Yeah. It's, it's part of it. Yeah. And so in those early years, when you were making the transition in from leading just yourself to leading others, what did that look like? Um, well, you know, it's funny. I think it was gradual, you know, and then maybe at times it felt sudden. In other words, I, so I think that we all have potential in terms of, I think we all have leadership potential. And I think that we are as humans, we, we want to connect with other people. Right. So for some of us, we gravitate more towards leading, being the leader in the pack, let's say. Right. And and so on on a very basic level, I think we all can develop leadership skills. Some of us can take that, uh, you know, to to a different level of influence, to a different level of connection, um, because there's there's natural ability, a passion. And then there's, you know, time put on developing their leadership ability. But like anything, it starts with ourselves. And I think, you know, like I said, the greatest project you could ever work on is yourself. It, it really is about how you come to understand your strengths and weaknesses, how you come to develop, you know, your talents, how you look at understanding your own behavior model and how that works for you or against you, right? So all those things you have to start to develop on your own before you could really be of value to help other people. And, and the thing about leadership, it's not about title and it's not about position, right? So when I look back on my career, um, you know, maybe I had certain titles, but just because you have a title, right, just because you have manager after your name doesn't necessarily mean you're a leader. Mm -hmm. And then I see a lot of people in, in our world, you know, around us or in different businesses or in community who have no title, and yet they're very strong, passionate, charismatic leaders, right? So so I think it's more about your commitment to wanting to help other people succeed. And so again, to your question, it starts with wanting to see how you can succeed, right? Um, and the other thing too, see, this is what happens when you just get me talking, right? But the other thing I, I just wanna, I feel like I wanna say in all of this conversation around personal development and mindset, behavior, leadership, um, because I get asked this sometimes too, you know, are you really this positive? And, and I, I guess the, I guess the answer to that question is sometimes, <laughs> well, the, really what it is, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And I just figured out a long time ago that I had a choice, right? And I could get up every day and I could see all the negativity or I could look realistically at looking at finding the things to be grateful for the things that are positive. I, I personally would rather put my energy to solutions than to complaining. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just as human as the next person. So yes, do I, do I have moments where I have doubt? Of course. Do I have moments where I get a little freaked out and nervous? Sure. Do I have moments where I'm, I'm negative or frustrated or, you know, angry? Yeah, of course. It's just that I've learned not to stay there too long. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to ask myself some questions about why I'm feeling that way and see if there's something in that that I can use to figure out how to get out of it. And so, so and so similarly, how do you help other people lead their way out of that? Because part of leadership, right, we can be positive and motivated yeah. and growth minded and all of those things. And yet sometimes when we're leading a lot of people, not everybody is automatically going to be in that mindset. So what are some ways that you're able to lead others into having that mindset? I think the first thing is to meet them where they're at. You know, and um, that just takes, again, coming back to self, you have to have some self-awareness, right? And you have to uh, be willing to take the time to to first meet them where they're at and just ask some questions about why they're thinking or feeling that way. I, I don't think anyone wants to necessarily be told what to do or how to think, um, yet 
I, it's been said many times that leaders or coaches teach people how to think. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to tell you, but I want to teach you mm -hmm. right now, depending on where that person is at that moment, they might feel that the teaching is telling, but it's really about, I think, helping them self-discover through some, some good questions, some powerful questions about what they're thinking and feeling and why, and, and helping them to figure out what they can do next. Right. Because, that's another thing. I think we we know we have more answers. We're just not connecting with them. And sometimes a good leader can help you see that and help you sort of take the time out necessary to to think about what your options could be. And and so uh, you have led me for many years, right? I have been um, grateful enough to be part of your orbit. And what I have observed is that you really lead from a coaching standpoint, right? And so I think your background as a coach and your designations as a coach has helped you helped you develop exactly like you said, where you aren't managing and barking orders at somebody, but you're helping people lead themselves to their to self-actualize their own goals. So can you share a little bit about how your coaching journey mm -hmm. has coupled nicely with your leadership journey? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, again, through that time in my life, as I um, was, was sharing with you um, in the beginning of, of the episode, you know, when I went through that transition and uh, I was in my late twenties and, you know, working to redefine my life and, and, and move forward and on this personal development journey, you know, I was able to see how I was not just growing personally, but how that was affecting me professionally and how I was becoming more effective in, in what I was doing. I've always been in like, um, I, I've always, I started in sales, business development, marketing, uh, and how that was helping me to, to succeed at a higher level. Um, and other people noticed that, right? So it was, it was interesting because sometimes we would be at sales conferences and somebody next to me, you know, we're sitting there listening to these great speakers. I'm taking notes and somebody would tap me on the shoulder and say, that should be you up there, you know, or you tell us that all the time, right? So you hear that enough times and you start to take a step back and say, huh, could I now take what I've been learning and applying in my life and help other people? And like I said, I, I know my, one of my core values and has probably always been there is coming from contribution. And so I think that, you know, for me, I'm, I'm just one of those people who, when I look at my natural talents or skills, you know, being a teacher, a guide um, is, is very natural to me. And I have always found helping other people achieve success very gratifying. So I just got to a point where I said, huh, maybe I could pivot out of what I'm doing professionally as a salesperson or a business developer, or entrepreneur, and use all of that to build a business around coaching. And so that's what I did in, um, uh, I quit my job at the time and started my own coaching business in January of 2010. January, 2010. That's when you officially launched your coaching business and you were able yeah. to couple both. Yeah. And 14 years ago. Yeah. And then what happened? So, I mean, you know, I was very fortunate because I was known in the business community and I did have a good track record, right? I was someone that they saw um, succeeding and I was someone coming into their business to, you know, uh, promote our product or service. And so when I turned around and said, you know, I'd like to help other people figure it out, I'd like to help, you know, I focused on business coaching because that was what I was most connected to at that time, you know, my entrepreneurism or my sales ability. So I really developed a niche around helping small business owners and salespeople. And um, so because of, of the visibility I had, um, it was it was relatively easy to generate clients. So I was able to get the business off the ground pretty quickly. And, you know, like a lot of other people did my networking, B&I. So, you know, when you show up as someone who wants to help a business owner figure it out in a business setting, people want to talk to you. And so I did that for... Um, I guess about two and a half years 
uh, before I had the opportunity to do some coaching in the Keller Williams world. It, well, I started doing coaching in the Keller Williams world before that, but it was around that two year mark that um, I was given an opportunity to come in and work at Keller Williams with uh, my business partner now, Rosemary. And um, I came in to lead one of her newer offices. And um, it was exciting because I felt like it took all the things I had done personally and professionally, and, and it prepared me for that. And Keller Williams is a company that is very focused on, you know, professional and personal development. So it was in alignment with my values. And so uh, that's what we did. And um, yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot of history there. That's, you know, how we've worked together over the years. But I've always maintained that, like you said, that, that I think um, perspective of coaching and, and developing other leaders. And that's a big part of what I've been doing. Of course, it's continued to branch out to other projects and other things, but um, that's how it started. So you had your own business and then you got into business with Rosemary with a newer market center that she had launched in Middletown, right? And so what was that? How were you able to identify that as an opportunity, right? Because some people would look at it and say, I'm have my own business and it's mine and I own it. And then you were able to look at what Rosemary was doing. And like you said, fit the two things aligned, but I don't know that everyone would have the ability to have that foresight. So what was it at that time that helped you see the opportunity of what was in front of you? Great question. I think a few things. Um, first of all, it wasn't a quick decision. She and I both um, met and, and talked for several weeks. Um, I, as I mentioned, did have experience in the um, Keller Williams ecosystem. You know, I had been coaching real estate agents um, in a couple different KW offices in the tri-state area. And, um, you know, part of some of their meetings, I'd actually gone to... Um, KW's national convention a couple times. And so I had a lot of, you know, tangible experience and I knew enough about the company's culture and their business models that I felt I could align with that. And, and the funny thing is, you know, I, I never sold real estate, right? So I've been in sales my whole life. Uh, so I'm coming into this, not having necessarily a specific real estate background and, and still PS do not have a real estate license. Um, but yet that's not what I was being hired to do. And that was something that Rosemary was also very encouraging about and very clear. I was being hired to develop the agent's businesses first, you know, to work with them and, and mentor and coach them and, um, attract agents to the company, right. Through, uh, the same process, really through, through that you can, um, you know, recruit or attract people to your company and uh, all of that then leading to the development and the growth of, of, the, of the company, which are things I knew how to do. Um, and so there was a moment where, and I guess, you know, again, this is different for everyone, but there's a moment where you just have to trust and you have to just take a leap of faith. And so, you know, I did my due diligence. I had all the conversations. I asked what I thought were the right questions. You know, I knew the things that were checking boxes for me in terms of alignment. Um, and yes, I had this other business. And there were a lot of people around me at that time were like, are you crazy? Why are you going to work for somebody else? But what I was coming in to do felt, and I, and that was, I think, another reason why I was successful or continue to be successful is I've never lost my spirit of entrepreneurism through it. You know, I always came in understanding the balance between, yes, I'm here to do a job. I, I'm I, at that time, you know, I'm working, you know, for someone or reporting to someone. And yet I owned it. I took it on as my own business. I took it on um, with a commitment to see it grow. Um, I'm not going to tell you the first couple of years were great because they weren't. They were very hard, very challenging. I learned a lot about myself in that time period. Um, it revealed a lot of my fears. You know, a lot of that old programming started showing up, like I'm not good enough to do it. Um, and you have to just work through it. So, uh, and I did, and I'm glad I did because my life has changed completely because of it. But back to the, to, to that moment, I just had to take a leap of faith. And I just, you know, at some point you just have to say, if everything feels right, do it. And sometimes, here, here's the bottom line. If you don't know me, here's something to know about me. I believe when you jump, 
the net shows up. Some people don't jump until they see the net. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, one is right or wrong. It's just for me, that's how I am. You know, at some point when I'm ready to, to take the leap, I believe the net's going to show up for me when I do. I think the other thing, knowing you and Rosemary, is that your visions align. And, mm -hmm. and that's important, too. When you're thinking about what opportunity you want to see or go towards, you have to make sure that your vision is aligned with anybody that you're getting into business with. And so would you say that that helped for those first couple of years where it was a learning curve to, to say the least step again? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get Rosemary on. Um, I, I did do an interview with her during COVID that's probably on our YouTube channel, but, um, you know, what's funny about us is that we have so many things that are in alignment and in common, and yet we're very different, right? The way we approach things, and you know, you've worked with both of us, right? Um, and you tell me, would you agree? Like we approach things differently. Yes, but you approach things differently, but you have the same end goal. You have this, you, share, you have a shared vision and end goal. Correct. We have a shared vision and we share values. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing probably that really made me feel good about that decision, you know, almost 13 years ago was that I felt I was in alignment with her. And I felt I was in alignment with the vision for the company. I felt I was, you know, also in a place where values were were shared or in alignment too. And and for me, that that's what makes it all work. And um, you know, I I would give that advice to anybody who's getting into business or a partnership, is to to know that you take the time to look at those things. Even if you're hiring someone for your company, um, you know, our values in alignment. Is there a shared vision? You know, if you see that you're constantly pushing and pulling someone, that 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 might reveal something. And again, it doesn't mean you're right and they're wrong. It just means you're not you're not lining up somehow. And um, I, I learned that the hard way as a leader. Sometimes I held on too long thinking it would work out because you know I have a high sense of optimism. But uh, when when it shows up and it's not feeling right, there's a reason. Right. And so I think the other thing about um, our ecosystem is that it's very entrepreneurial, even though it is a, a business and there's a structure to it. It's very entrepreneurial in that if you think about something that you want to create, the doors can be opened so that you can then create it. And, and I believe that was part of what continues to motivate you, right, as you're growing yeah. out our businesses. So when you were looking forward and you started off running the Middletown Market Center, right? But you had, I think, a bigger vision of what everything could could turn into. Can you talk a little bit about that journey? Yeah, um, you know, I love the time that I was in that leadership position, um, you know, in, in our office in Middletown. And uh, I was in that position for eight years, just about eight years. But uh, I would say... Two years before that, um, when you realize that things are operating on all cylinders and you realize that and you can recognize where you've seen growth and opportunity, for me, it's natural to look at, okay, so where can I duplicate that, right? Can I continue to provide that opportunity kind of like a ripple effect, right? So of course, there's ways to do that and continue to grow what you already have. Um, but for me at that moment, specifically, I got thinking about, well, you know, would Rosemary want to start another Keller Williams office? So, um, you know, I approached her with that idea. We started working together on it. And then, you know, off I was into another market to um, put together a group of realtors who wanted to help us form uh, at that time, our third location, our third KW franchise. Um, and, you know, that was exciting because it meant that I could create more opportunity for people. I, I like gr growth. Um, I crave change. So, you know, for me, it was, it was like the next natural progression. And then that, you know, gave me an opportunity to grow. It gave me an opportunity to then come into the general manager's position of our entire organization where I had to level up and learn new things again, right? But then that meant I also created opportunity for other people like you because you came in and led that office in Kingston. Um, and so that's what's exciting about being a leader is that you grow other leaders and that you you pave the way. You know, John Maxwell, you know, like one of the probably world's most notable 
thought leaders on leadership has said that, you know, if you are calling yourself a leader and no one is following you or no one is growing behind you, then you're just on a walk. You're not leading anybody. So for me, you know, that it was, it was always knowing that, yes, I could create opportunity for myself, but then it meant that I created opportunity for other people. And so you, you went from, I'm creating the opportunity for myself and then I'm growing the market center locally and I'm creating the opportunity for the agents that partner with us there. And then you created a new opportunity in a different area, which led to additional leadership opportunities for people, right? To grow yeah. underneath you, not just the agents, but an entire leadership team to grow underneath you. I guess one of my one of my questions that I wrote down to ask you is, how do you spot talent when you are now a lot of your role involves spotting and bringing talent onto our team right and then developing that talent what are some of the keys that you found along the way to spotting talent so first i'm going to say that in order for you to find talent you have to be looking for it right it's not you know sometimes you're lucky and you run into things and you run into opportunity or people but really what has become very clear to me um is that i i have to always continue to balance my schedule and balance my time right because i do have um a lot of responsibilities now we have um gone on to create other companies, right? We have other companies besides the three um, real estate uh, brokerages. I, I always say I'm a serial entrepreneur and I love to create business opportunities for myself and others. So, you know, I can get weighed down by all of that, right? All the operational things, all the leadership things, all of the day-to-day. -day. And yet you have to know that if you're committed to developing people and finding talent, you've got to get out there and do that. You've got to be out in the community and you've got to be out in the business world. So I'm just saying for me, that's a big aha in the last 12 months is, is really getting out there again more. Once you're out there, you know, what am I looking for? Well, a few things, you know, I'm looking, I think I'm looking Oh, look, to be honest, because of who I am, I'm looking energetically probably first, you know, and I'm just looking at how is somebody showing up? And, you know, what is the energy they're bringing into the room? And, you know, in addition to that, obviously track record, you know, I want to see that they have a track record of success um, and, and in what areas, because then that helps me to figure out where they might fit into my, my world or organizations, right? So that I can find the right place for that talent. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm, I'm just being reminded of something. I think it's... Um, is it Pete, Pete Lencioni, the ideal team player? Just we'll have to, you have to have to fact check me on that one, but you know, we can put a link to that in the show notes if I'm right. Um, I'm pretty sure I am, but he talks in that book about this formula to look for. And he talks about humble, hungry, and smart. Mm. And I think that's brilliant. And I found time and time again, that that combination does work. Mm -hmm. Humble, hungry, and smart, right? Because the humble keeps you in check, you know, and I think hungry means you have a drive to want to see growth and success. And obviously we want to be strategic and thinking, and we, we need to bring certain skill sets to what we're doing. And whenever I found one of those pieces missing, it's usually when, when I see someone's not going to hit that high level of, you know, production or success. So those are just, you know, I gave you a lot of information there, but those are just some of the things that, um, I'm looking for, and I'm looking for a willingness. I'm looking for a willingness for the individual to want to grow and to want to learn. Um, because I never want to be the smartest person in the room. And I want to know if people around us see that there's a lot of opportunity to, to learn from each other and other people. And so you have to have that willingness too. And so as you, as you continue to grow, just like you said, and you're, and you're passionate about learning, what are you most excited about for this coming year? Oh gosh, you know, so I think 2024 is an exciting year. I think this is a year for more abundance in the way we think more abundance in, in the things that we attract. Um, you know, we're internally, we're talking about more in 24. And I think sometimes if you, 
want to really connect with what you want more of, you also have to be aware of what you want less of. So, um, you know, those are great questions to ask ourselves coming into this new year. Um, but I think for me, like my word of the year, I'll, I, I'll share this again. My word of the year is breakthrough. Mm. And I look at that in myself first, you know, what, what do I want to break through in terms of, you know, leveling up or thinking bigger. I feel like um, I, I'm very grateful because I feel like I have a lot of wonderful things in place foundationally in my personal and professional life. And, you know, I'm ready for the next level and I'm never afraid of the next level, you know, because I've been asked that question too. Like, well, when is enough enough? And it, it, it depends on what you mean by that, because I'm grateful for everything I have, but yet I'm here to live a big, big, full life. So I'm always ready for what's next. And because of what I just said to you here on, on this podcast, I want to bring people with me. I want other people on the journey with me. So if I keep thinking for bigger and better and more, then I can provide that opportunity for other people. So um, specifically, I'm looking to uh, continue to grow our businesses and attract more great people to our companies. Um, I'm looking to expand this platform on the podcast. Certainly, this has been really fun. And um, I think there are some great speakers that we have lined up and events that we can create from this community, which I'm excited about. Um, I'm looking to teach more. Uh, I know you and I are planning some workshops and, and things that I appreciate your support. And, you know, you, you said you were like behind the scenes. She's the Oz people. She She is Oz. And without you, I couldn't do those things, right? And that's that's the beauty of collaboration because we all show up in our strengths and what you're really strong at, I'm not. And so together we can make great things happen. So I'm excited about a lot of, a lot of that. Yeah, I think this year is going to be transformative. Uh, and my word of the year is progress. And so oh. I want to make progress in all areas of my life. And a lot of those areas involve being able to work with you on so many different projects. And I'm always grateful for that. So um, I will release the handcuffs. I will end <laughs> the podcast back great. over to I, you. <laughs> I really, no, this was great. I appreciate you. Um, and you're a good interviewer, Rita. So ah. you know, we may have to have you do this more often or have your own podcast. No, I, I think it was great. It was fun to be on this side of it. Um, I have a couple of, of podcasts scheduled where I'll be a guest, so it's it's good to do that. Um, but I loved that you gave me an opportunity to just share a little bit about myself with everybody. And um, you gave me things to think about. Like I was connecting with stuff that sometimes we don't stop and think about. And so I'm grateful for that too. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I'm looking forward to more mojo in 24. <laughs> yes, me too. Thanks everybody.